Hello, hello, welcome to Actors Anonymous Podcast. I am your host, as always, we Sam Kish, co-hosting Cheryl Texera. Woohoo! What's going on? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I had a somewhat productive week. It was nice. Somewhat productive. Yeah. It wasn't nearly as productive as I would have liked, but That's okay. You got some stuff done. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like your earrings. Thank you. Th- Th- those are I like them. They're, they're flashy. Loud. Yeah, they're loud. they're loud. They're uh, they're for Harvey. They're for Harvey. Yeah, which is our who is so our guest our today? Guest. <laughs> Harvey Gann. Hello, hello. Eye candy. Yeah, crazy ex girlfriend. Yeah, and uh, confessions of a bittersweet uh, actress. He's, he did. He kind of killed it in, he liked in an a episode. Whole, like number. Uh, it was. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. Oh, oh my god! Remember that? I kept of course. Twenties and and like choreographing. And it was like not like a slow ballad. It was like (laughs) face, 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 jazz, jazz, hands, get on there, get in there, sing this song. I actually did the whole routine for you right now. That was it. That was it. That was it. Well, you're also singing on Crazy Ex Girlfriend. You said right? Yeah, we're dancing, singing. It's a musical. Uh, It's great. It's Monday night, so you gotta check it out. Uh, They introduced my character this Monday night, so check it out on the CW. They introduce it, so that means there's more than one episode. Well, there's hopefully more of that character are coming back it's a hopefully recurring so gotcha. they introduced him as uh they already presented his house as the party house in the first episode and you just get to meet him now so yeah how That's did you awesome. how did you guys get uh, hooked up together or meet each other we did oh, chocolate milk we did which is a project that i produced and co-wrote and uh we i think you're the only person that we cast that we had never met because <laughs> we cast all our friends in it and then we saw like we just saw her and we're like, no, she has to be in it. And like, we just hit it off. And then the, the short went on to win awards. And it was, it's, it's hilarious. Yeah. It's, it's a chocolate milk, the movie. It's basically, I was, I happened to be on Kickstarter one day, just rifling through people who had, um, successfully, uh, got, like, funded their campaign. Yeah. And you know, there are so many trailers on there that are kind of like, okay, good. I'm excited for them. Mm-hmm. Their trailer, which I still think is on there. Yeah. I think it, so was hilarious it was <laughs> so brilliant the the comedy was awkward and yeah. weird but the characters are so defined oh, that's awesome that i just i found them on facebook and just kind of said like congrats like i i can't wait to see the film and then and then this man hit me up yeah and we like we're like she's an actress she has to be in it and <laughs> which is still some of my favorite moments in the film oh my god it was great it's really kind of napoleon dynamite they live in a small town they're right. stuck in 1988 kind of feel like wardrobe and style and like land language really and your yes. ha- remember your hair yes it was, it was like insane. feathered out and like it was giant it was amazing <laughs> <laughs> you're such a trooper because i was like it was, it was like an hour in the chair it, just was, to get it wasn't hair. sexy <laughs> <laughs> it's like the opposite I it was, I <laughs> well, it's amazing to me how many projects are out there on all these gofundme sites you know kickstarter gofundme rocket hub and you know, if you're ever looking for inspiration, just kind of—I'm not saying steal people's eyes, steal people, <laughs> steal people's <laughs> idea—but you know, just kind of go on there and see the stories that are being made. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Now, I watched uh, a few clips from Eye Candy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on the, "You're a Fellow MTV Brother." We're, we're MTV brothers. There, yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And it just got me to thinking because you play the character who's uh, like this laid-back hacker, kind of cool. Guy, is that a good yeah. description of? Uh, yeah, it's yeah. a great description. Of okay, George. Uh, originally, when I uh, got the role, it wasn't mm. he was entitled George. It was called Juan. Uh, and I remember Catherine Hardwick directed the original pilot. And Wait, after, I'm sorry, Juan or Juan? Juan. It was Juan. It was the Juan. Juan in Juan. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Catherine directed the pilot, and after some changes, they like scrapped everyone. Like literally, wow. like the whole storyline changed, and uh, the only people they kept was Victoria Justice and myself, which was like, okay, wow. thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah. And then you know, so that was like in 2013, and like by 2014, we got picked up. But then they revamped everything, recast people. Uh, my character went from uh, Juan to George, mm-hmm. uh, which was Christian Taylor, who's the showrunner for the show. By then, uh, he's like, I wanted to name you after my sister. Her name. George and I was like oh okay cool I thought it was gonna be like the story of like I really want like the name to be someone who's powerful I was like oh like you know George yeah. Washington or something. it's like no like my sister her name's George and George I was is like, a girl's name too right well, she, well he's okay. British so maybe it's like the normal thing Georgia um, I didn't know oh okay Georgia yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think that's very cool that yeah that's a so girl's name. I, like I that. thought wow cool and then uh, funny story of like he was really specific about the characters how they had to look I mean it's MTV so mm. like everyone's like cool and edgy and sexy so he comes into the wardrobe and hair you know room and they don't know what to do with my hair because I went from being Juan slacker I don't care like hair down he said no he's edgy he dresses cool and his hair has to be I don't know sexy edgy cool like um 
or like me? And we're just like, <laughs> what? And he just leaves the room. <laughs> and he literally, he wasn't joking. And then so my hair in the show, like the way it's designed is actually, if you look at a picture of a uh, showrunner and you look at a picture of George, <laughs> they have the same hairdo. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. That's yeah. hilarious. Well, I bring it up because... It has a lot to do with what people are. One of the clips was, I can figure out this person's password or no, no, no. It was talking about how much information you can get off somebody from like Facebook and like oh, social yeah. media. And I was like, yeah, that's terrifying. Especially I, for actors. Yeah. I'm so scared. Like I, like I was just telling yeah. Cheryl, I was like, I don't, I don't tag like my family and stuff. I don't tag no. people I'm close to. Um, I just don't like, because they will fall like fans will follow them and they get information out of them. Like, yes, I made the mistake once early on of tagging, like think, you know, it was like my sister-in-law or something. And someone commented like my picture, not even the picture of my, me and my niece or anything. It was just like a regular picture. I said so, like, your niece is so cute. And I was like, nope. Shut it down. Like, I was yeah. like, I've, I've had bad experiences like that where I've had to like defriend like literally hundreds of people off Facebook and, uh, they still message me like, Hey, can you friend me? Yeah. And I'm like, there was a reason why I made a whole post. Like, you know, I just want to keep Facebook to close friends and family. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And they keep messaging me constantly. Yeah. Like, and it's the, scary. Huh? And these are, it's these weird. are fans of uh, yours. One, that yeah. One of them is a fan and one of them knew my family like years and years ago in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And it's like, and all of a sudden they're your best friend. Right. Like, right, like, right remember right, how right, your right. best friends remember? And it's like, no, I don't dude. Like yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's yeah. so uncomfortable, but it is true. You can yeah. get all the information you need. Like, another thing is like, we give so much information willingly. Like yep. people who put like in the back, the back of their like bumpers or cars, like family, and they show everyone. It's like, you just, told me you have kids <laughs> what their names is. Yeah. like i was like you're making it so easy for like a predator you know what i mean like it's like you just told us oh, you have yeah. a baby and like you have two little kids like that's scary don't put that information out there like i don't want you know what i mean it's, it makes it so easy for someone to like follow you home like nowhere yeah. you know it's, uh, it's, uh, especially when you're like going on vacation i remember like in college people would be like oh i'm going back home for like two weeks or whatever and i'm like I know you leave your window and door unlocked right, right. all the time, and you just posted right. you got a new Xbox. That's, like, yeah, yeah, that's like a bling ring. That's what it's based on. Like where celebrities would, you know, party in Vegas, and they would rob celebrities' houses because they know they weren't home. Yeah, because they'd oh be like, "I'm God. in Vegas yeah. partying," and they crazy? go into Paris Hilton's house and they rob her. Like the whole movie is based on that. Like, yeah. like a group of kids robbing celebrity houses because they you told the world you're not home. And they hit a number of them. Totally, not just yeah. one. Like it was like several houses. It was like specifically like during an awards show or something where they every. Knew they knew they, were they weren't going to yeah. be there and they just went over the hill and into the house they go it's Lingering. crazy yeah 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 really? i'm just be careful what you post online <laughs> yeah. i just i was yeah. watching this clip and i just stopped watching like the acting completely and i'm the video started already, thinking about yeah, it yeah the video's already <laughs> stopped and i'm just sitting there in my yeah. room like a weirdo like <laughs> well, that was like, what was great well, about the show like, it got people about thinking it. about that because yes. people were like that's not is that is that true like people were really concerned i was oh, like my. it is really true like people can hack into you like i'm like paranoid like people can watch you through your camera like i put a little thing yeah. on my camera yeah people yeah. Put, like because yeah. I, I do that too because it's like we went through like hacker school what i did like the first round and we were amazed at like how many things could be done like I was like are you serious I'm like yeah it's like most likely someone has seen you if you leave your like they've if they, even if they glance at it someone can hack into your computer like who's that whatever but there's hackers out there who make it a like a lifestyle just to like you know I want to challenge myself how many people yeah. are right. You know. God, I'm sorry. God bless you. <laughs> that was the cutest <laughs> little sneeze that in the was world. A sneeze? I didn't even. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like a mouse squeak. And I was like, is there? There's a mouse in here. It was like. <laughs> Shit! I'm sorry. I had to comment on that. Cool. <laughs> it was the cutest thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was oh, like man. a Disney character yeah. just popped up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, anyway, you went to. I want to know more about this hacker school. Yeah, yeah. So the first one, uh, Catherine was really interested about. You know, us really kind of falling into the character like she was like ah, i want you guys to really you know get into it that's she talks um, <laughs> she was like, because you got your lover over here you got your hacker over there man and you got your work. and i was like what <laughs> <laughs> she was so great that I was, was like, like <laughs> just essence of like yeah, <laughs> the, I yeah. and i was uh, like and i love Catherine. she's great she actually was the one who directed um the Lady Gaga music video that I did. Oh, really? Yeah, she oh. called me up and she was like, uh, that was in the great story because uh, it's Till It Happens to You, which is a song yeah. from The Hunting Ground, which is a great documentary you haven't seen. But um, you play a predator. I play a predator. She called me up and I yeah. thought she was going to say like, you know, I want you to be the best friend who like says, it's okay, I'm here for you. But she's like, no, I want you to be the predator. And I was like, 
what? Nice. And she was like, because, you know, 90% of, you know, uh, victims say that they were attacked by someone they knew and trusted. So yeah. it has to be someone who you let into your house, your dorm, your life and whatnot. So playing that was so hard. And I shot that with Nikki Reed, um, from Twilight and from, yeah. And she just, she went full out. Like she was punching me and like crying. Like after every take, we only did three, thank God, because after every take, we were both like, also as the actor, like me attacking someone and me as Harvey saying like, what are you doing? Stop, you know? And like yeah. making me feel like disgusted just like as I'm doing it, but I have to do like being that mindset and, and, uh, and convincing myself that it's what they want and what the, we both want. Well, you got to have so much control first off on yeah. your end, like knowing as an actor, like, okay, these are my limits and discussing those limits beforehand with your partner and with the director. It's those scenes are super, super uncomfortable, man. I, I only did one kind of scene like that. It was about child brides and oh my gosh, dude, it's just like almost nauseating after yeah, every Exactly. Single take. After the take, I was just like, I feel sick. And then the, you know, uh, Diane Warren, who wrote the song was there and she was like, you're really good, man, but you fucking scare me, dude. She's yeah. like, that was scary to watch because I know you're a good person, but watching you, that's scary. And I was like, well, I guess that, you know, that's the job of the actors to right. like, make right. it look as realistic as possible. But you walk away with that kind of scar a little bit because you're like yeah. I feel disgusted like afterwards I just felt like we did three takes Nikki like went full out like she had like scratches and like she like it was intense and like she oh. cried at the last take and she was on the floor and I had to like step out and I was just like uh but up until now like that was probably one of the hardest things to yeah. do because I'm so used yeah. to not playing that like I'm playing the opposite right. as a funny comic relief yeah, and, you, yeah you have such a light that you're so uh, you're yeah. so approachable you're so right. uh, like loving and you can see it which and, makes like, it more torturous to I watch. disagree exactly <laughs> 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 no, but which is so, which made it so disturbing. Yeah. yeah. Everyone said that, like, and I got such great feedback for it because I thought I was going to be like, why are you doing that? And it's like, because especially because I work with like, you know, the shows and Nickelodeon and whatnot, and they all like said it's a message and it's something that we know right. that it's obviously not you. And so watching it, I just thought, well, I hope it's going to be taken, you know, what we're trying to tell it's the story and the message mm -hmm. and i got messages from f friends from high school who are like oh i'm so proud of you for doing that and um and messages from people who felt comfortable to say actually that did happen to me and i was like what like people yeah. that i knew and i was like what and they're like so watching it thank you because i haven't you know said it out loud and now i said it but i'm dealing with it but i just want to let you know yeah and it's like wow like that's that's and they the come power. to the person who's playing the you know attacker that was powerful to just read that so it's nominated for like an academy award like oh my gosh man. i didn't yeah. know that that's yeah. amazing yeah it's nominated for a grammy and nominated for an academy award like it's doing the rounds and stuff wow. so yeah so, for a grammy amazing yeah it's gonna for a grammy oh for like the song the for the music? song oh okay yeah. got it lady got gaga it. song right, um, right right and it's nominated for an academy award so hopefully diane takes the the trophy home yeah <laughs> <laughs> that'd be amazing <laughs> that's wow. uh, man that's when, when people respond to you that, like, I mean, that's a really personal message to send out to somebody first off. Yeah. I mean, what's, I mean, there's no how to respond back thing. So, like, I mean, it's all like, I mean, I'm assuming it's like, hey, thanks. Like, what is the, me like, you know, I'm not saying like, I, read the me message like for me, second. but like, what is. Like, it took me a second to like respond because I didn't want to be like, oh, bummer. Sorry about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I didn't want to be such like, a throwaway. Yeah. So I really thought about it and, and wrote back, like, I think like a day or two later. Like, I really had to think about it. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, you know, something along the lines, like, it's, um, I'm so glad that, you know, you decided to share this because the first step is like, you know, admitting that it happened because people hold it in. And you can tell whoever you feel comfortable with. Yeah. And hopefully you, you know, are getting like some kind of person to talk to and counseling or whatnot. And also I want you to take that person, to, you know, to justice. Like I want them to like pay for what they did. And, but that's not my decision. That's their right. decision. And so hopefully you're taking the right avenues and, uh, you know, kind of, uh, getting your, you know, kind of a uh, nice bow at the end of you. Well, you know, yeah. what happened because how can you really kind of, come full closure with something like that you know okay. no, what do you absolutely. do like what do you like will you get closure if you go to court probably you know probably probably not it depends on the person will you get closure if that person uh, gets arrested and you know and they get like being in, in jail and that's showing them but it's like everyone's different like everyone has a different way of like getting there yeah. you know well I mean look at Kesha right now did yeah. you guys see that? Yeah, I, yeah. I read a little bit. It's crazy. She, do you know what's going on? Or what have you read? I mean, really brief overview is that she worked with a producer who sexually assaulted her uh, years ago when she was 18 and drugged her and 
raped her and um she ba- she wants to get out of her contract with sony now um who she is contractually obligated to do six more albums with and sony basically said all right well you don't need to work with this particular producer um but you need to stay under sony and she just feels that sony is not going to actually promote her album the same way that they would if she doesn't work with him so it's it's very interesting but it's one of those things where you know a lot of people are really mm. coming forward and saying she she's not asking you to throw him in jail she's literally just saying let me remove myself from him as much as possible and this is like another example of a victim coming forward and people being like well, I mean, what are the ulterior motives here? I don't really know yeah. and stuff like that. And that's why. So the resolution is like, you might not get what you want and you yes. publicly came out and said something. And, and it, you, know. you feel humiliated. Yeah. yeah. It's it's crazy. Now, do they, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you know or, or who knows, but do they have like proof that this actually happened? Are they, is she pressing charges on him or is the like. Well, since happened when she was 18, right? Yeah, I think it's a totally separate case. Right? Yeah. This is just, she wants to be separated from him. That's, that's totally separate from sexual charges. Gotcha. Well, who wants Ugh. to be around that? I mean, she's been around yeah, that for right. so long. And, like, and it took this long to get the courage. You know, it might take yeah. years to get that courage. And That kind of pisses me off, it. actually. Now, it pisses a lot of people off. It's because like, hashtag yeah. free Kesha. You're fucking oh, yeah, Sony. It's, it's just trending. like, yeah. it's like, dude, fuck you, producer. Bye. You know, like, right. yeah, it's like, we don't even want that. Well, it, uh, it's almost like Sony's like... Standing behind uh, let me, him yeah, exactly. Way. It's like yeah. let's well, let's hold on to him. He's got a lot of hits, but no, go go play over there. It's kind of like you might have a producer sexually assaulting your artist. You don't maybe want to take care of that in-house problem right. first. You know, that's like, it's sad. That's that, like the norm. Like going back to the documentary, the the hunting ground, which the song is for. Uh, they go, you know, these victims. They're in college. They go to the dean, and the dean asks you not to go to the police. And the first thing they ask the victims is. Were you drinking? How much were you drinking? What were you wearing? And um, are you sure you didn't initiate anything? Those are the three questions that all of them were pretty much asked. The three questions were, how much were you drinking? And oh my God. Were you drunk? <laughs> what were you wearing? Because you were asking for Unbelievable. it. Unbelievable. And did, are you sure that you changed your mind? Like, how, like those are three questions. Not, are you okay? Uh, let's, have you seen, uh, seek medical help? No, none of those. It's actually, you're already, like accused that it's your fault as the victim so you have to watch that documentary it's so great and like they they follow these girls around who like speak about it and it's so sad because they show the people who are kicked out of school for cheating on tests it was like it, like in 2013 it was like uh 98 students were kicked out of like you know major university for cheating on their test one was kicked out for oh, being accused of assault my gosh. out of 150 complaints or something like that one was kicked out of the school for the assault. unbelievable oh yeah God. and you know it's it's such a i don't i don't know how like the, the way to solve this you know it needs to be solved that's uh, plain and simple and then you have like a, other on the opposite end of the spectrum crazy people sometimes girls accuse guys of you know like he raped me and they go to jail and then it's like and oh no i was uh, he didn't uh, years after and it's like dude you just fucked that up for like real victims I you know? know i know it's like you just fuck things up not just in your world but everywhere else it's like well like uh, now now what do we, like now what do we do yeah. seriously I know this, this took a dark turn. Took a dark <laughs> turn. <laughs> We're talking yeah. about your show. I can't be. We well, it started off really dark already. <laughs> yeah, right? it's pretty gritty and hacky. Yeah, and but that's, I mean, that's part of life. Yeah. That's part of acting. Especially, like, I, I get drawn to really dark roles. Like, really dark stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know why. I just like delving into those type of characters. And I don't know. There's just something about it. Like, maybe this thought process or the justification of what you're doing because that's really interesting too sometimes Mm. like listening to murderers the way they justify their actions like serial killers especially like whoa you live in a completely different world yeah Yeah. are you like hearing yourself like yeah Yeah. sometimes it's like they know that like no i'm yeah i'm killing people and it's bad but like i have to be that opposite to the good right it's like yeah 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 who are you and that's kind of dangerous to like you know as an actor it's like 
dance slightly with your demons kind of thing because you have Ooh. to absolutely you know. that's such a that's such a great uh analogy as to what it really is yeah it is because i feel like we're probably all for the most part very happy people but we are all drawn to really yeah. dark characters right. because we want to understand right we want to know what that world is like because yeah. we don't live in that world every we day. don't live in it right yeah. and so when you do you have to like open the door and tap in and get in but make sure you don't close the door behind you know what i mean it's yeah. like such like dance slightly with your do demons. a cleanse <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> what did yeah. they burn? Uh, what's sage. It? Sage. There yeah. you go. Do a sage cleanse. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, but I was gonna say something about like the, the happier dark- note. <laughs> know, right? What are you working on? Or you got the crazy ex girlfriend coming? Crazy ex girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. What else is out Monday? Tell us. Okay, what was the audition process like? Because you're okay. singing on the show. Yeah, we're singing, and dancing, and so the audition process was kind of interesting. I went in for the show probably three weeks in a row that month for different roles. Like, I remember going in and the caster was like, Harvey, I'm going to get you in this fucking show. It's the last thing I do because she's great and she loves me and she was just like, I think you're perfect for it. And so we went in for a different role and I didn't get that because for whatever reason. And then like, I was working on Thundermans one week and I had to like self-tape to send in for the second role and it, it didn't work out. And the third role, I was like, if I don't get this third role, and the guy was like, come on. And the funny story about it is, I'll tell you in a second, is that I went on audition, um, I got it and they, they're really efficient they just work really fast like we literally shot all our stuff learned the choreography and the singing in all in one day it was like a 16 Great. hour day it was like a crazy day like you never saw your trailer like you went in in the morning like at 5 30 a.m and you didn't leave till one because they're so efficient like they don't waste anything you know you have downtime and you go sit down yeah. and whatnot no they're like like if you're not on set and you're not filming like the scene like the acting scene you're in the dance studio learning the routine and you're learning the routine blah blah, blah. they touch you up they take off the sweat you go back in put on like you know your shirt or whatever go do the scene and acting and they turn the cameras around go back to the dance studio because we haven't done the dancing yet in front of the camera polish up the dancing sit down, do the music, go back to the, do the acting. Like, it's like you are constantly going, going, which I love. I love that. It reminds me of musical theater. Yeah. You know, it's just like, it reminds me of like, always just like, you have to be on your toes. Go, right. go, go. And so shooting that was so awesome because it was just like, it reminded me why I love, you know, performing so much because it felt like that instant gratification of like, you're performing and even the crew's like smiling and laughing and like, you're dancing and whatnot. Uh, it's so great. And Rachel, who's the creator of the show, is so, so funny. And she just, um, you know, won her award, uh, People's Choice. And it was just Golden what was it Globe. Golden Globe? Golden Globe. Yeah. No, he was just, she Go Rachel Bloom. Um, Rachel Bloom, just amazing. She was sitting next to me, and I, and I asked her, "So, uh, are you? Is this based on a true story? Like, you know, crazy discovery?" And she's so open. She's like, "You know, kind of loosely. Like, I was like so <laughs> in love with this guy who was our musical theater. Like, he come from like West Covina." And like teach us in the marina where she lived. Are you and then, serious? Yeah, and I was like, that's so funny. She was like, yeah, but she wasn't like that extreme. But she would find excuses to go to West Covina to bump into this guy. Like she's like, I'm at the movies too. <laughs> and this guy would be like, what are you doing here? Like it's West Covina and you live like by the bay. And like it's like, oh, it's so funny. Um, but she was telling the story. She's like, that's so funny because I actually went to school in West Covina. Like I actually did go to school. And oh I'm playing God. this character. Um, his name's Beans. Uh, and I know it sounds racist, and that's actually his line. But it, he didn't get the name because he's Mexican. He got right. it because he organizes meat and trays for Beanie Babies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they got the name Bean. <laughs> it's okay. It's not a racist, Beans. We, but, I mean, that's the actual line. Yeah. see the Beanie um, Babies? <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of funny, the character. And so I was talking about it and she said, yeah, so there was this guy and I was like, I, w- I grew up in West Covina. I went to a musical conservatory out there. And she's like, yeah, he went to a musical and I was like, whoa, what's, wait, what, what's his name? And oh I'm not going to the name, but it was like blank. And I was like, blank, blank? And he's like, yeah. And so, like, yeah, you sing out with these three friends, blah, blah, in college. And, like, they, like you know, she knew of the friends. It's like, you know, one of them was tall, blah, blah, and one of them was short and stout. And I was like, I hung out with blank, blank. I, it's like, yeah, he had a girlfriend who was doing, I'm friends with his girlfriend, blank, blank. And I was like, it was Inception. It was like, I'm playing myself in the show. I'm playing myself. Wait, wait, wait. Are you I'm serious? I'm playing myself in the show she based beanie off of a friend of <laughs> what and like changed it you know what i mean tweaked and when they're hearing the girlfriends tweaked a little bit and everything they do different professions they don't do what they did in the moment <laughs> but all the i was like i'm <laughs> what is happening like it was just like i was ready to like I was like, and I was like, what? And then she was like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. You know, oh my gosh. And so technically I put it all together. I was like, so I'm playing Josh's best friend. Josh is a character that they switched the name to Josh. And that's who I'm playing. I'm playing his really good friend. I was really good friend. With, uh, and it was just okay. Like all you together. know, the chances of, of that, that happening, happening 
It has to be predestined, like pre, I, like. And I couldn't, and I looked at the whole idea of like auditioning for other roles in the show, and like I was like, I got this role, and I was like, I have to audition to play myself. <laughs> It was, it blew my mind, but she never met like any of Blank Blank's friends Dude. or anything. Like she knew of them. She knew the girlfriend, <laughs> but I know the boyfriend. I knew the girlfriend at the time, like the real girlfriend who they were together. I still talked to both of them. And it's just like, it's so funny to hear her say this story. And I told her, I was like, Oh my God, I know. And it's like, oh, so you hung out. And it's like, that is funny. And of course we were filming in the middle. So we went, we didn't even acknowledge after that. She was like, ah, cause she's a hard worker. Like she is like typing the next episode up until they say action. They're like, okay, Rachel, ready to go. One second. She's typing, typing, typing. Okay. Okay, in five, four, three, two. You know, Josh, I, like she goes right into it. Like she, what? Wow. Really? Yeah. That is- she is a hard work. I was like next to her the whole time, and I was just like, yeah. And I told her when she won, like I emailed her, and I was like, you totally deserve it. Like you're such a hard worker. And she said, thanks, Harvey. Like it was just like because she worked so hard to make the show like you know productive and successful. So kudos to her. So we didn't really get to dive into the details about that, but once I realized it, I was still like inception mode. But she was like, that's so funny. Oh well, you know. And she kept going, and I was just like. <laughs> <laughs> like, <I'm just> like, <laughs> like, you're like, yeah. Lady, did you hear what I said? <laughs> I know him. I'm literally playing the best friend to the guy that you had a crush on. I'm, in real life, friends with the crush. Like, it was, yeah, it was. That is hilarious. Yeah. Right. So does, I don't, does, does Josh in real life watch the show? Or is that something uh, you can tell me off? <laughs> um, I, I, uh, I can say I know that. The, <laughs> I can say that they watch <laughs> the show. I, I'm really close with uh, the now ex-girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, she was blown away. She loves the show. And she was just like, and actually it's funny. I mean, I won't say the name, but like, uh, she's, she's a big, big, big YouTuber now. Like, huge YouTuber. And, uh, and she was like, oh my God, I love that show. I was like, do you know the one who plays like the yoga instructor, the girlfriend? She's like, yeah. That's kind of... Oh, my gosh. Like, oh my she God. was never a yoga instructor. She was always, like, you know, musical theater and whatnot, but they were changed the profession and stuff. But it was like, that's so funny because it all aligns. It's so perfect. And, yeah. That's... Harvey, that's amazing. Crazy. Uh, we are out of time. But oh. <laughs> thanks for coming in, man. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, thanks seriously. Me. Like, that story is uh, it's just amazing. <laughs> a nice little button. Right? Wow, yeah. Oh um, where can people find you on the interweb? Uh, you can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Harvey Guillen. Harvey Guillen. Yeah, cool. my full name. Just type it out. Awesome. And Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Monday night. Monday CW, night. Check your local listings. So excited. There you go. Check your local listings. So, so professional. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We'll be right back. Sunday. It'll blow your mind. I'm going to give you all the information. Okay. Please. Please. Would love to come. It will actually yeah. change you. It will change you in terms yeah, like of And he's a total thing. skeptic, and now he's all I'm like mushy and stuff. I'm a skeptic. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. You were like, what is this I shit? Was, at I first. Was. I was like, it's good. Beagles in and stuff. You were like, but you guys are both actors full time. Right? He was yeah. like, this is know. weird. So, yeah, we talk about how <laughs> you can do it. It's really Artistic tools, empowerment tools. How crazy must it have been? It's a really hard life. This oh is God. like yeah. That's why I was like. <laughs> 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 yes. uh, you ready? All right. And we are back with us in the studio right now. I'm super excited to get this thing going. Is Jen Rudolph and Jeff Mitchell? Uh, Jen Rudolph is founder of the Actors Green Room, and both Jen and Jeff have been casting directors for many a years, and you've been in the business for a while too and thank you so much for coming on the show thank you for having us okay so (laughs) i went to the website for the actors green room and i love it thank you this is why the reason for me creating this podcast was i was very blessed and i was a hard worker as soon as i came out here and i i was able to gain a good amount of success when i a few years into the business but I noticed there was a lot of actors, they were stuck in this like negative mindset. This, this negativity was just encircling their lives and it was just, like vicious. I'm like, man, I don't ever want to be caught up in this. Even if like, you know, if business goes down for a while or it goes back up, I don't ever want to be in this kind of circle. So what can I do to give back with my experiences? What can I do to help out the people who are struggling? And the best thing I found was to do a podcast and bring on actors and talk about the stuff they've learned, their struggles mostly, the the experiences they've gained and the stuff they've learned from them. And I feel like maybe a little bit of what the Actors Green Room helps in keeping actors out of this negative mindset. Am, am I wrong? No, I'm, you're right. 
Yeah. So if there if there's a small like description you can give of it, I mean, what is it like a haven for actors? It's a sanctuary. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, sure. So let's see. So the Actors Green Room. Um, I founded it about eight years ago in New York City. And, you know, there are some other companies out there that do what I do, um, in a sense. Well, not really, but, you know, they, um, they offer workshops, you know, with agents and managers and casting directors and whatnot. Right. Um, the owners aren't really involved. It's very much like, you know, hey, here's what's going on. Take our classes. You know, and for me, you know, something that I've always prided myself on and, you know, the reason why I went into this business is because I love actors. I love working with them. I love nurturing them. And I've been mm. very hands on. And as a casting director, you know, you have a limited amount of time in the room with actors. And I found myself getting frustrated with that. And I was like, you know, I really want to do more. I want to spend more time. I want to mentor more. You know, I was just so personally involved. And, you know, for me, um, I just really loved uh, working with them on camera. And then that kind of segued, you know, into me, you know, mentoring them off camera. And then ultimately, I opened up AGR, as we call it, because, you know, I just wanted to influence and ultimately, you know, um, just make people find their seed inside of them in which they could, you know, blossom, you know, and for me, um, the minute that I want to stop being involved with them is when I close AGR. Like, that's really my philosophy. You know, um, I teach people how to be successful from the inside out. Um, the motto of AGR is from my favorite 80s movie. Uh, so it is, um, 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 a field of dreams and the motto is if you build it they will come you know which is from that movie you mm. know it's like he goes into the field and he hears this voice and it's like if you build it they will come over and over and over again so <laughs> you know for me I always say to actors you know if you build it they will come so you know like if you're marketing yourself properly if you're taking care of yourself properly if you have the optimal package you know logic dictates that you're going to get recognized you know but here's the other thing you know like when you're building it you have to build it on something. And if you don't have a strong, fertile foundation, you're not building shit. Do you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So I feel like a lot of other people out there, you know, like are promising people like, hey, you know, you can be a star and, you know, blah, 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 blah. No. But I mean, you know, how can you get ahead? How can you even attract the attention, you know, if you have all of the stuff inside of you that in a sense is kind of holding you back? You know, it's like if you walk into an audition, with the mindset of, you know what, I'm just not good enough, like, I'm not pretty enough, I'm, I feel so competitive, I don't feel good about myself, you know, that is all just really going to translate, and it's just going to come through. Like, it's kind of like if you go on a date, right? And it's like, you're on this date, and, you know, you're with a hot guy or a hot girl, and you're thinking, they're out of my league, I don't know what I'm doing here, blah, 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 blah. And, right. like, you know, you could be the best person in the world, but, you know, because you're already thinking that, you know, that's infiltrating your conversation, and then they're going to think that you're weird and then they're not going to want to go out with you again. So, Absolutely. you know, it's the same thing in our business. Like if, if you have all of these self-limiting, you know, feelings about yourself, you know, then there's absolutely no way that you're going to achieve success. You know, if, if you're not keyed into, you know, how the business works on that side, you're not going to achieve success. So at the Actors Green Room, what I do is I really train people holistically on the inside and on the outside. You know, I'm a shark on one side but I'm also you know very nurturing on the other side so, you know it's just very much like a yin yang sort of place well I think it's important for actors to realize that whenever they go into a room that we've said it on the podcast m millions of times probably but no one else is going to do you mm -hmm. better than you that's right so show the best of you I recently took an acting course last year towards the end of the year and when you when you uh, oh my gosh his name oh I'm so sorry uh, mm -hmm. but his name it just it comes out of my head uh, anyway he was saying Walk in as a 10, your version of a 10, every time you walk into a casting office. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's that's yeah. great advice. You know what I mean? Like the best of you, why not? And I think really focusing, and that's another thing that I think actors and just people in general have trouble nowadays. And I don't know if, I'm, I'm sure the actress green room has a solution <laughs> to this, but focus yeah. and really adopting a certain mindset or yep. that zoning in like okay for this block of time i'm focused and whatever this is what i'm going to be doing yep because we have so many distractions around us oh sure. my gosh your phone what's going on in your personal life yeah. and to really practice on just the the task at hand is yeah. so critical that's right i mean i would say we opened up the actor's greenhouse uh mm. which is our um holistic did uh, i say green room 
Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> the actress is great. <laughs> I have there's so like much green. green right? There's <laughs> so much green. I know. There's so much green. So the actor's green room is the overall brand. Right. And the parent company. But um, we opened up the Actors Green House, which is a sub company of the Actors Green Room, you know, in which we offer uh, classes and workshops all about the inside. So Wonderful. we, we I love opened that. that about a year ago. Uh, my wife actually runs it. Great. Um, she's a yoga teacher. She's a healer. She's an energy worker. And, you know, we just came up with this idea and we were like, you know what? Actors have a lot of self-limiting, you know, stuff going on. And like, you know, I'm noticing it and everything. And I'm like, you know, we need to help them. We need to help them. So, you know, we do um, essential oils for actors. We do chakra yoga for actors. We do chakra workshops. And then we do something called um, uh, Create Workshop, which has taken New York by storm. So basically, Create Workshop uh, was founded by um, Tony-nominated director, writer, uh producer um uh Kristen Hangy and uh yoga teacher meditation teacher actress author Natalie Roy and um they've been doing create for about a year and they stalked me at AGR and they were like you know we want to be involved with your company and I was like who are these girls like what the hell is this <laughs> so you know I skyped with them and I was like this is really interesting like they're offering this like this workshop that combines like positive psychology eastern philosophy yoga principles and like dream coaching that you know ultimately is just really like helping the actors get out of their own way you know they're helping actors realize their truth and you know like it's kind of like if you have a window and then over the years like it just gets muddy and there's shit on it like they're helping you clear all of that stuff from your window so that your light you know is able to shine through and we offer this workshop uh twice a week in new york it's super cheap it's like uh twenty dollars you know and it's like a two dollar it, it's sorry it is a two-hour workshop and people are crazy about it and now we're bringing it to la wow. because la actors are starving for you know attention they're starving for community it's so cutthroat out here it's so competitive well, this is something that like i always a lot of new actors who come to la this is what i've noticed they were in high school they did theater and they loved it and yeah. you know they had a connection to it great and then they went to college and they adopted some bad habits in sure. college, uh, laziness being one of the biggest ones. Yep. Um, and then they're like, well, I don't know what I want to major in. I'll do communications <laughs> and theater. Okay, I'll do theater. You know what? I always have a good time. And that feeling, I think, that feeling of, oh, man, I'm always having a good time when I'm in the theater and when my theater friends, yeah. I'll just do. I'll just be an actor. Yep. I'm just going to be an actor. That's why, because it makes me feel good. Yeah. And then, okay, you move to Chicago, you move to New York, you move to LA, and you come out here, and it's like, <laughs> like you're you're always striving for that that high that you used to feel sure. and it's it's not coming and then right. that negativity swings into play yeah. so something that for me that's helped why am i doing this what is my reason yeah. for even being an actor right Wh why why do i want to do it and then from there build your motivation okay what are the stakes if i don't do this or why what will i gain if i do this i think that's so critical yeah. For for ac yeah. actors, artists, uh, human beings in general, wh whatever field or career that you're in. Well, once you find your why, at that point, you're going to find your how. Amen. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if you have the why, then, you know, after the why is acceptance, right? So, you know, a lot of actors don't want to accept how the business works. You know, it's brutal. It's competitive. You. Like, you, you have to get in front of casting directors. You know, like, you absolutely have to. You know, you have to have a headshot, you know, that is an industry standard, you know, excellent shot that, like, it, it's just you and you walk into the room. Like, you know, you have to invest in yourself. Every business, there is advertising and, you know, you have to invest in yourself. You know, I mean, you just have to. And, you know, in, in our business, it really is no different. But I feel like a lot of actors are like, you know what? I went to Yale, I went to NYU, I went to UCLA, I should just be handed stuff. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, that that's not how it works. So, you know, you have to have the acceptance of, you know, here's the path. This is what I need to do in order to achieve success. You know, if you build it, they will come. I have to market myself optimally. I have to accept, you know, that, you know, that it is a certain way. Um, and then I have to take all the appropriate steps, you know, and with that, you know, I mean, look, this business can be brutal. It can batter you, you know, the rejection, you know, for every, you know, a hundred, you know, no's, like maybe you'll get one little yes. You know, I mean, it can take time. Like you never know what's going to happen. Right. I mean, I've worked with actors, you know, who 
I worked with for like three years um, who then land, you know, like a series regular. And then I worked with some actors for seven years who got no credits and then they land a series regular with no credits. I mean, you know, you never know what's going to happen. But along the way, you have to take care of yourself. Otherwise, you know, yes. you're just going to get battered. And then, at, you know, like I was saying earlier, if you're coming from that place, you're going to sabotage yourself and nothing good is going to happen from it. So, you know, at AGR and, you know, everything else that I do, it's just it's very holistic, you know, like half business half you know artistic and you know um uh, therapeutic I love oh, yeah go ahead. yeah no I I love that and Jeff are you do you facilitate with the greenhouse do you facilitate with the I work with all the different um uh departments all the greens NGR, all the, the greens green <laughs> yeah I mean Jen and I cast for for many years together and you know we're very, very clear on how when you know you were just saying that actors show up in New York, LA, and they have literally no idea what they're up against. They they believe that it's about acting and about talent and about getting discovered and becoming famous. They don't realize that th there's a whole different world going on here. Oh, yeah. A little select club that has access to everything. How do you get into it? Certain bunch of agents and managers that control ninety eight percent of what's going on. You know what I'm talking oh, about. Yeah. And so. You know, well, the doors are closed. Okay. You know, like as well, you say, well, it's a small club. The doors, the doors are, closed. are always closed. And yeah, and so coming with that kind of industry knowledge, inside knowledge, AGR focuses on both um, aspects of getting into the business. One is getting all your ducks in a row in terms of really what you need in order to make it work as a business person in the business. Right. And then you have the whole artistic thing, your craft, your instrument, and what you're bringing to the table when you walk in the room in front of a casting director. And the director. psychological and stuff. And then the last part, which is inspiration, both from a mentor, okay. which is what Jen's become, on her blog and on, on the, and, Facebook, and the group, Facebook group, the, the Green Lounge, lounge. That's the, Green, the lounge. Green Lounge, which has like 4,000 members. It's extremely active. And that's and about inspiration from yeah. a mentor who's telling you, I know this path. Follow right. my guide. I will tell I've you. I've made and a then, lot of people series regulars, you know, based on this method. Right. You and know, then, I never promised anyone that they would be, a, you know, a series mm -hmm. regular. But I'm like, you know, if you do this, you know, and you're letting yourself you know, shine bright in a certain way. And if you're really taking care and if you're, you know, nurturing yourself, you know, um, inside and then on the outside level, it's like, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, I mean, literally, like, I, I, I actually just read on uh, The Hollywood Reporter yesterday, um, one of my students, do you remember, um, she used to come in for our castings a lot, uh, Dewanda Wise, she was with Jocelyn Herman at the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Dewanda Wise, you know, I, I th th this has got to be 10 years ago. Like, she's been plugging away for 10 years. And I, you know, when I met this girl, I was like, there's something very interesting about you. I have a very good feeling. And, you know, I don't say that all the time. You know, like, it's just something that kind of just jumps out. And I'm like, mm, I think something really good's going right. to happen here. You know, the girl plugged away for 10 years. You know, like, she got little things here, little things there. Yesterday, I went on to The Hollywood Reporter. The girl booked her first series regular role on a new Fox series, and I sent her an email, and I'm uh, like, I told you. Um, go, Dewanda. That's do I, awesome. I know. I, and I was like 10 years. Um, do you guys know? Uh, I'm still hung up on her name. I like the name. I, Dewanda I Wise, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> do you guys watch um, Odd Mom Out? Bravo? Oh, I've seen it, yeah. Okay. Uh, K.K. Glick. Uh, who plays Vanessa, right? So she was one of my students, like, for, again, seven years, right? Plugging away, plugging away. When I told KK, you know, like, when I first met her, I said, I don't think you're going to be a co-star. I don't think you're going to be a guest star. I think you're going to book a series regular. Like, I mean, she's that strong. She's such a personality. She's such a type. And she was like, yeah, right. right, right. So, you know, again, she plugged away, plugged away, plugged away. Um, she met uh, Brett Goldstein, um, who is a casting director who's amazing um, at AGR like a few years ago and you know Brett was like so I'm working on this show called I'm I'm out you know I'm bravo blah blah blah, blah. and you know she saw KK and she was like I think you'd be really perfect for this role of Vanessa you know you don't have any credit like zero credits nothing on her resume nothing wow. and you know she got called in um, she did a chemistry read with uh, Jill um, and Brett fought for her, fought for her, and she booked it, you know, and now she's a star, and, like, she's being featured everywhere, you know, she got this huge agent that just kind of flew in out of nowhere. She's in the club now. You know, she's in the yeah. club, she's got a powerful manager, mm -hmm. and, you know, and now it's like she's getting recognized, and she's like, 
I, I don't know what happened. I said, I told you that you were going to book a series regular role when the time is right. Do you know what I mean? Like she worked on herself you know she went back to acting school you know like a few years after i was I, I met her because you know she was like look i'm not getting any traction i feel like maybe there's something holding me back she went to an awesome school in new york and then she came back into the game you know she was taking workshops at agr i met with her you know i mentored her in a certain way i, I told her exactly what to do and i said it's a matter of time and again, you know, like, I don't say this to everybody, but I'm just like, there's something about you. I think you're going to book a series regular. I just feel very adamant about that. Right. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know where it's going to happen. If it's going to be Netflix, I don't know what the hell. Boom, it happened. You know? Uh, quick, quick question then for you. Um, when the time is right. Yeah. What does that mean to you exactly? When all your stars align. I mean, you know, in terms of KK, it was she her her stuff was at you know was where it needed to be you know her business sense her chops everything about it and the right project came along with all the right stipulations you know i mean mm. it, it, it everything just kind of happened you know well, but I, also uh, when the time is right yeah part of what agr is about and what yeah. uh, in all my years both in casting and managing and working with agr yeah. when the time is right is also has a lot to do with the actor right and what they're doing what they're contributing with it. look you never know you do not know Acting is crazy because you could always be one job away from something that's All you gonna need completely is one. change your life. All you need is one yes. I, I represent one yes. I represented the early in her early career Molly Shannon. I watched her build her career and build a career, discover discover comedy is what she needed to go into. And it took her my god, I I represented her when she graduated from college from NYU and it took her what 12 13 years before she ended up on Saturday Night Live James Gandolfini I represented him for the whole beginning of his career who would have known that David Chase at that particular point was going to come up with that yeah. one character um, however in both cases you have super 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 well motivated actors who were doing the right things and focusing on the career James Gandolfini was in the room to meet David Chase because he'd earned his right to be there. Mm. It, uh, Molly Shannon had fought her way through, and mm. I have lots of stories like that. But AGR is about um, is about strategizing all the pieces you need in the career, both from your business perspective, because mm -hmm. we offer classes in meeting casting directors but we always tell actors you have to be ready yeah don't go before a casting director I discourage director people to come ready. to AGR until you're ready if you're not ready because you'll, you'll ruin your opportunity yeah I'm like don't come yet scene study scene study scene wow. study don't come right, I don't right, want right. the money take a minute you know I'll tell you when you're ready. Yeah, That's you don't belong in front of a casting director in any environment unless you are ready. We've watched actors make really big mistakes. So Because they'll gotta, remember you. Oh, they'll remember you and yeah. they'll never see you again. So you have to have the you have to be ready from your business perspective, ready from your craft craft perspective. And, and the then perspective. you're gonna get to be an actor mm -hmm. in LA or New York, you're beat up on a regular <laughs> daily basis. You have self doubt. Am I good? Mm -hmm. Am I not good? You base your self worth on your very last approval or disapproval, either audition or job or booking. Right. You go crazy. So you're getting beat up all over the place. Your brain is getting pushed through sp like a spaghetti machine. You're being you're being destroyed emotionally. Mm -hmm. and that's how come create was created because create yeah. is empowers actors to get their brain and their focus together. Because look, the way you think. And the way you think about your life, yeah. yourself, your talent, and your work is right. is extremely important to how you follow through. And it lets you be vulnerable with other artists, you know, Instead and it creates a community. Like yeah. these people who come to create our best friends you know we take that's why we the created the podcast <laughs> we take like, all, that's right, exactly. everything you're saying i'm like yes right. this is why this is why we we're take right all now. the competition <laughs> out of it because you know in a sense here's the thing you know every actor is like a snowflake nobody's the same you know what i'm saying so it's ironic that by creating this kind of community that all of these actors are booking major work because it's like the mindset is shifting like people are being offered jobs like like it's kind of cosmic and weird it's like a little, sp you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. people are friends, like they're going to the theater with each other. They're doing this, they're doing that. You know, I mean, but that's and part of yeah, it. And it ultimately, is. the collaboration yeah. is empowering. The waiting room tension and the waiting room um, 
environment between actors, which is like, oh, who's she with? Who's he with? And oh, what did he book? And oh, that doesn't can happen. I get a glimpse of who's yeah. that agent? Yeah. Let me look at the sign in sheet. Let me look at that resume. And yeah. then people talking about their projects in ways yep. that are just a little extra loud. That's so unhealthy. Oh my I gosh. So unhealthy. Move myself from the waiting room. I literally. But my people <laughs> are in the waiting room with like you know eight other AGR people, and they're all taking selfies. Right. You know, like. The thing, the thing yeah. about it is that prosperity is the, if you come from the perspective that uh, success and prosperity is limitless yeah. and not that somebody else's success is creating um, a desert for you and that there's enough to go around for everybody. And sometimes it's really hard to remember that your success doesn't take away from my success. And that is just one principle that is not just taught at create but it's instilled in create and it will empower you exactly when you walk into a room and there's generosity between actors you know what you create collaboration to yeah. success many many years ago um at nyu um uh i remember in in acting class uh they would always teach us that the most important thing that we could do as young actors was to identify who in our class we thought were the most talented, collaborate with them because they're the directors, producers, and actors of the future, and they will be your road to success. Huh. People forget mm -hmm. that. That's and good. it and it turned out it turns out always to be true. Mm -hmm. Look at people like Meryl Streep and other actors you see winning Academy Awards. They've been friends with the people mm. they've been collaborating with right. since college. Look at Judd Apatow, you know, and like his, you know, his whole uh, entourage, you know, like oh, yeah. Judd Apatow, Leslie Mann, Seth Rogen, Paul Rudd. It's like, you know, they all keep on collaborating. Right. right. You Tina know, Faye, Tina Amy Fey, Poehler, Amy Poehler. Geez. That's all they do. Right. Yeah. But it's like, you know, isn't it interesting there's strength with, all in the, community. with all the principles yeah. that support collaboration actors still fundamentally due to short circuits in their brain in terms of prosperity, they fall back on this bad habit of competitiveness instead of generosity, right. of jealousy mm -hmm. instead of of graciousness right. and right. It, it, and that's what we mean when we say that the this industry could you know it, are we allowed to say bad words on podcasts? oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> beat the crap out of you beat the shit out of you yeah, it, yeah. It, ruin, it takes the essence it takes your life force away yeah. and we give it back if you let it right and we give it back that's why we want you guys to come to create so create workshop create workshop create tomorrow. workshop in los <laughs> yeah. angeles tomorrow yeah at five, right? tomorrow at 5 p.m to 7 p.m at the actors key in burbank 3504 magnolia boulevard and we're going to be live streaming it every sunday night so what'll be happening is um i'll be at the one in new york city with natalie and uh Kristen and then we're going to live stream it to Los Angeles and then we're going to have um, one of our people on the ground there and then everything you know is oh, going to so be happening in both places. You're flying out to New York. No 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 oh. I'm, I'm actually going to be here this weekend New and Yards. Natalie Roy is actually on a plane right now coming here ah. so Natalie is going to be in LA uh, Kristen's going to be in New York then we're going to live stream the two uh, tomorrow night for a very special event and then every week after that um, we're going to do the live stream from New York to LA because here's the thing you know we have a lot of followers in LA and they're like, you know, we love what's going on in New York. It's like all the support, all this community, like we want it. So I was like, you know what? I want to bring you the heart of AGR and the heart of AGR is create workshop. So, and then also what we're going to do is Natalie and Kristen um, and I are going to come here probably like every six to eight weeks and we're all going to do it in person in mm, LA and then we're great. gonna live stream back to New York oh, that's great. so we're gonna be doing that we're gonna be doing other types of workshops you know just like all based on these principles so I'm really excited about that where can people visit uh, the website uh, they can look at theactorsgreenroom.com and they can look under LA uh, classes great and then they'll be able to see all the create workshops happening that's wonderful I really that's appreciate awesome. that you guys have uh, you know what you guys are doing and uh, I'm excited to check it out. And are you? Are you yeah, able to yeah, be able to yeah make it no, well? no, no, I'm available. Yeah, I yeah, can't yeah, wait for you guys to come, and we can all share together. Yeah, yeah. Thank we'll you be in the share group together. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, appreciate you guys that. coming on if you guys have, have a twitter or anything that people uh, can follow you yes absolutely uh at uh agr nyla okay agr nyla and then if you look for uh the green lounge um on facebook so which is our green facebook lounge. group yep and the green lounge is our facebook group the actors green room com and agr nyla i love it wonderful yeah. wonderful yeah. Thank you so much yeah. for coming on, Thank guys. Thank you so much for having us. Such a great episode. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was super fun. I, uh, I'm really excited. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm excited. <laughs> You're going to be there, Jeff? 
Oh, are you yeah. kidding? Oh, that's awesome. He, he's addicted now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. At first, he was like, "What the heck are you doing now?" And I'm like, "Come on, this is good." Are we gonna be? There's some <laughs> yoga. Yeah. Not an yoga. Oh. There's a lot of yoga talk. Okay. In the create workshops, but love I mean, it. if you want, you know, like I can go in the corner with you, and then we can do some downward dog. We'll do some, yeah, that's fine. Love it. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. I will <laughs> cool. not participate in this. Jeff will be working out at the gym. So. <laughs> I'm exactly. That way. He doesn't bend. He just lifts. I love <laughs> yoga. Excellent. It's great. <laughs> um. Cheryl. We well, Sam. Thanks for uh, joining me this week. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> You're a silly ghost. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I, I had nothing. I, I leaned into the mic and I was like, I was expecting I, something. I, I know, had, nope, that was what I had. Uh, people can find you on uh, Twitter? <laughs> yeah, just Cheryl Texera. Check me out on Facebook, Periscope. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Big thanks to producer Jordan Burbank. It's at Jordan Burbank 7, right? Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> uh, Nikki, thanks for uh, being our social media czar and for working the board today. Appreciate it. At Nikki592, people want to follow you. And that's N-I-K-I, because I looked for the girl. For hours? It took a minute. <laughs> it took a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big thanks to uh, GVB Studios for your wonderful place. Gabe, I know you can hear me. I love you, Gabe. I know you're smiling right now in the other room. This is weird. Anyway, uh, you can find me at We Sam Keish, uh, our podcast at, uh, what is it, Park- Actors Anonymous Podcast.com. Almost zoned out there. And we have, uh, we still have our Patreon if people want to check it out. We've got some great deals for you guys there. For people who want to give a little bit extra, we can give a little extra back to you. And always remember to listen, think, and then talk. <laughs>